Welcome. In this video, we're going to use the graph of f of x, and this here is f of x, to determine the intervals of continuity of f of x. So when we're determining intervals of continuity, we really just need to focus on the numbers along the x-axis. So let's start from the smallest place where f of x is defined, and that would be here for x equals negative 5. At negative 5, it looks like f of x is defined. So our first interval of continuity goes from negative 5, and then if you notice here at negative 3, we have this hole, and we jump down to this value. So we're no longer continuous when we hit negative 3. Furthermore, as we approach negative 5 from the right, the limit of f of x equals f evaluated at 5, excuse me, negative 5. And as we approach negative 3 from the left, the limit of f of x as we approach negative 3 from the left does not equal f evaluated at negative 3. Okay, so that's our first interval of continuity. Next, we go from negative 3 all the way to negative 2 in this continuous streak. That is, we don't have to lift our pencil up. The limit as we approach negative 3 from the right does not equal f evaluated at negative 3. And the limit as we approach negative 2 from the left does not equal the function f evaluated at negative 2, which is around here. Now there's a portion here on the graph from negative 2 to what looks like negative 1.8, I would say, where f is just not defined at all. If you take a ruler and draw these vertical lines, there is no function, there's no purple line that crosses these two vertical lines. So our next interval of continuity is going to start at negative 1.8. And as we can see, as we approach negative 1.8 from the right, f evaluated at negative 1.8 is equal to the limit. Additionally, as we approach 1 from the left, f evaluated at 1 is equal to this limit. And now our next interval of continuity runs from x equals 1 to x equals 3. The limit as we approach 1 from the right of f does not equal f evaluated at 1. As you can see, the limit is approaching this value up here from the right, but f evaluated at 1 is down here. As we approach 3 from the left, the limit is equal to f evaluated at 3. And finally, let's go ahead and draw this arrow. This is meant to continue out to infinity. Our next interval of continuity begins at 3 and goes out to infinity. As we approach 3 from the right-hand side along the x-axis, the limit is not equal to f evaluated at 3, which is up here. Now as x continues on to infinity, it looks like our function is just barely going to stay above the x-axis, and of course we can never actually reach infinity. So that's our final interval of continuity. So our function f is continuous on these intervals. I hope this video was helpful.